as we all know, God gave us the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Explanations. He told us what we have to do, and then he left it up to his bride, the Holy Mother Catholic Church, to explain the whys and the wherefores. So we've already quickly gone over the first five commandments, but then for the last few sermons, we've taken a different approach. We've been taking some time getting the context for the sixth commandment. Why? Because it's not uncommon to find that even fervent Catholics who want to faithfully obey God's holy will in these matters tend to be confused here. So in order to remove the confusion, we're spending the extra time. What we're shooting for isn't just know the rules, but to understand why the rules are the rules. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Later on in the sermon, we'll pick up where we left off before. But first, there's a closely related problem that needs to be addressed from the pulpit. That's the ongoing scandal. Now that we've all probably heard these politically correct opinions, opinions of all the spin doctors and experts with regard to problem priests, as an antidote, everyone should hear the actual teaching of the Holy Catholic Church, which somehow seems to be left out of all this. Pope St. Pius X, quote, Holiness of life and sound doctrine are the two conditions which must be regarded as essential for the promotion of clerics. Priests have the duty to be holy, not simply in a mediocre degree, but completely. Ordinary holiness is not enough. The holiness of a priest must be outstanding. He must avoid not only mortal sins, but also the smallest sins. It is the wish of the church that priests should avoid every fault, for what may be venial in others would be very grave in their case. Pope Pius XII, quote, Chastity must be solidly possessed and proved at length. Hence, whenever young seminarians show evil tendencies in this regard, and after due trial show themselves incorrigible, it is absolutely necessary to dismiss them from the seminary before they receive holy orders. From Religiosio Orum Institutio, a document that at least theoretically is still in force, was promulgated by the Sacred Congregation for Religious in February of 1961. For the sake of the listeners, several key words will be edited out. Religiosorum Institutio, quote, Among the proofs and signs of a divine vocation, the virtue of chastity is regarded as absolutely necessary. Should superiors find a student unequal to the task of keeping ecclesiastical celibacy and practicing priestly chastity, then completely ignoring any other outstanding qualities, they must bar him from the religious life and the priesthood. Advancement to religious vows and ordination should be barred to those who are afflicted with <coughs> evil tendencies, since for them the common life and the priestly ministry would constitute serious dangers. Close quote. We can see here the great compassion of Holy Mother Church. She's banned any men with these evil tendencies, whether they act on them or not, from holy orders and religious life because she's concerned for their salvation. Because it's a serious danger for their salvation. Finally, Pope Pius XI, quote, on the matter of vocations, we exhort you to keep in mind the stern words of the angelic doctor, St. Thomas Aquinas, whose feast is today. The church is never abandoned by God, 
to the point of not having enough capable priests for the needs of the people if it ordains only those who are worthy and sends the unworthy away. If it should ever become impossible to preserve the present number of priests, it is better to have a few good men than a multitude of bad ones." Close quote. The church is never banded by God to the point of not having enough capable priests for the needs of the people if it ordains only those who are worthy and sends the unworthy away. It is better to have a few good men than a multitude of bad ones. It is better to have a few good priests than a multitude of bad ones. St. Anthony Mary Claret, confessor and bishop, quote, I know by experience that the greatest punishment that can befall a people is a bad priest. It is best to leave a town without a priest than to send one unworthy. If God does not send me men who are truly called, God himself will have to take care of the people and souls by means of his angels. A call is God's gift. I must not bring the unworthy into the sheepfold to destroy it instead of tending it. Close quote. St. Anthony Mary knew exactly what he was talking about. He inherited a diocese chock full of heretics, dissenters, and priests openly living in sin. So what did he do? He got rid of the bones. In six years, six years, he had a flourishing diocese. Six years. And a lot of those guys repented and became good priests because he loved them enough to knock their heads together. It can be done, it has been done, and it must be done. Why isn't it being done? Why isn't it being done? St. John Hughes, quote, the most evident mark of God's anger and the most terrible castigation he can inflict upon the world are manifested when he permits his people to fall into the hands of clergy who are priests more in name than in deed. When God permits such things, it is a very positive proof that he is thoroughly angry with his people and is visiting his most dreadful anger upon me. That is why he cries out unceasingly to Christians, Return, O ye rebellious children, and I will give you pastors according to my own heart. The most evident mark of God's anger and the most terrible castigation he can inflict upon the whole world are manifested when he permits his people to fall into the hands of a clergy who are priests more in name than in deed. When God permits such things, it is a very positive proof that he is thoroughly angry at his people and is visiting his most dreadful anger upon them. I was trembling when I typed this, and I'm trembling right now. <laughs>